What's up, Buck? What's up, Kevin? How you doing in uh, Tokyo? Just talk me through the last uh, couple of days for you, the flight, uh, quickly adjusting and uh, flying in on game day. Yeah, um, it was new, new experience. Um, but the flight was well, man, just trying to get some sleep for real and, you know, adjusting to the to the time zone out here. But, you know, the past couple nights, you know, I've got some great rest, you know, so obviously this game was felt a lot better than the last one. I know it's early days for you and you'll know better at the end of the tournament, but what are the biggest differences you're noticing with FIBA? Drew, Drew mentioned the ball for sure. Yeah, I think that's the adjustment. The biggest adjustment is adjusting to the ball. Um, I mean, if we had a couple of weeks to to prepare a little bit, I think we'd be more used to it. But, you know, feeling it for the first time on game day was you know, definitely an adjustment. Last one for me, um, on Saturday, you guys have got the game against Czech Republic a couple of days for you. I don't know what the restrictions are like, but are you hoping to get out to a couple of Team USA events as a fan? Um, yeah, I think we're going to watch our, our women's play, you know, in, in their next game. Um, we just watched the women's three-on-three -three game as, as a team and, you know, seeing them get a big win versus France. Thanks, Book. Have fun out there. Appreciate it. Next up, we'll go to Joe Barton and then uh, Brian Mahoney. Hey, Devin, uh, good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, so LeBron used to say after the finals that didn't go his way that he would never get over it. You're the first person in history to have to do what you're doing now, which is two days after the last game, come out and play for Team USA. So, I, I mean, I know it's sensitive, but I am interested in your emotions and how you're handling all this such a whirlwind and, and obviously a, a disappointment from last week to have to then come out here and play for Team USA. I mean, it's honestly an honor, you know, to be able to represent this country and, you know, put on the uniform that many of greats have, have worn before me and represent this country to the, to the highest degree. Um, but like you said, LeBron said, obviously the opportunity that we had a week ago, you know, will never go away. You know, even if end up, getting one later down the line, you look back at the one that you lost and said what, what it could have been. So, you know, it's something that you got to learn from, you have to build from and, you know, take in and use as, as motivation. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy to ever even get the opportunity to be there again, but, you know, it's all part of the journey, all part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ryan Mahoney, and then we'll go to Samuel Rodriguez. <laughs> Hey, Devin, picking up on that, uh, the first time Kevin Durant played in the Olympics, it was right after they lost to LeBron's team in the finals. And he said it was tough to see LeBron in the gym every day. I remember asking Kobe about that. And he said when he played in 2008, after they lost to the Celtics, he never could have handled having to see Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen every day. Uh, you know, you do have to see, obviously, Drew and Chris now. And, you know, Kobe said, if I saw those guys, I'd want to go at them every practice because, uh, you know, to get back at them. Do you have that in you, too? Or are you going to be able to kind of put all that aside and, uh, you know, not have those memories with you. I mean, the memories are there, but, you know, it's nothing personal between me. Um, we lost and that's it, you know, and I'm, I'm man enough to accept that and move on. Um, you know, so there, there's no hate, you know, towards Drew or, or K-Mid. You know, I said it during the series when we had this question, I have a lot of respect for those guys. I um, mean, you know, when you're, when you're competing at the highest level, it doesn't always go your way. Um, but you know, I'm a, I'm a next, I'm a forward thinker and, and move on to the next thing and be able to take my L and move on. Thank you. Next, uh, we'll go to Samuel Rodriguez and then Fago Franklin. Hey Devin, being in the Olympic Village must be a once in a lifetime kind of experience. Can you give us an insider's view on how it has been there and how your experiences have been so far interacting with all the other athletes? We actually stay in, in a hotel separate from the Olympic Village, but, you know, I heard the team during the ceremony got a chance to to go by and, and visit the village. And, um, you know, on social media, I've seen seen the village and what's going on over there, but, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to visit there. Pago, you're up next, and then we'll go to Robertus Kunka. Hey, Book, how you doing today? Good, how you feeling? I'm hanging in there. Um, what do you think were the key factors with getting a victory tonight? And what advice could you give the upcoming players that are getting drafted Thursday about having patience within their 
new NBA journey? Uh, the first question, you know, I say everybody was themselves tonight. Um, you got to feel for each other and, you know, you know, encourage each other to go out there and, and play free. You know, I think the first game, nobody wanted to step on each other's toes and, you know, wanted to make sure everybody was involved. But, you know, everybody came in with an aggressive mindset and it opened up a lot, you know, for, for each and every person. So um, big improvement from the first game. And, you know, as far as draft night, you know, for the guys coming in, you know, it's the, the biggest moment in their lives. And I know it's the biggest moment in mine, but, you know, just just take it take it day by day, you know, just understand it, it's a journey. You know, there's going to be highs and lows, but, you know, it's got to keep going, keep improving every day um, and, and learn the game, you know, find some good veterans, listen, listen to people, listen to the right people. Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Robertus, you're up next, and then we'll go to Akiko <clears throat> Yamaki. Hi, Devin. I wanted to ask you how much emphasis your coaching staff puts on watching film and scouting opposing teams, or do you just try to focus on improving your own squad? I think it's a mixture of both. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we try to focus on what we're doing in-house, but, you know, games change, you know, game to game personnel wise. So, you know, I think you have to have a gist an idea, you know, of your opponent, but, you know, more focusing on what your team's capable of and, you know, control what you can do as a team. Hi, Devin. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, how is it different to play against NBA team and international team? You said, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, you know, one, just the rules of the game, um, the spacing and what I said earlier, just adjusting to, to the basketball. Um, but I've only had, got two, two belts under my, two games under my belt, you know, as far as international play. So and I think after a few more games, I'd have a better answer for you. Thank you very much. Rafi, you're up next and then we'll go to Terrell Thomas. Rafiq, you might be on mute. Yeah, I'm muted. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. Congratulations on the win. Damian Lillard was lights out in tonight's victory. How much of an honor is it to play with him during the Olympics? Uh, it's a dream come true. You know, it's something that, you know, I've studied and I've watched before. And what I said earlier, you know, the chance to represent your country is, you know, the most prestigious event in basketball. Um, you know, so it's been an honor to, you know, grace the court with with the talent that we have out there and, you know, not just the players, the coaches, staff, the training staff. Um, you know, it, it's a great experience and, you know, I'm taking it all in and I'm enjoying it um, and we're, we're having a good time with it. And a follow up question. How meaningful would it be for your NBA career to get a gold medal at the Olympics? Um, for my NBA career? I don't think, you know, those, those go hand in hand, but, you know, personally, you know, it's something that, you know, everybody wants. Um, and something that, like I said, you know, you're, you're following who, who's came before you, um, you know, so it, it's a, it's a really big deal. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Terrell, you're up and then we'll go to Joe Barden. Uh, how you doing, Devin? Thank you for your time today. Appreciate Terrell it. Thomas, these urban times. You already uh, play with elite players playing in the NBA and you play under a great coach in Monty Williams, but can you talk to me about the experience and playing under Coach Pop, Steve Kerr, and playing under, playing with the likes now of Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and the guys you're playing with, with Team USA? Yeah, man, just soaking it all in. You know, you usually, you know, you know you're not on the same side as these guys. So, you know, any short conversation or anything they say, I'm a sponge to it. You know, I'm listening. Um, and, you know, not just asking all questions, just, you know, observing from the side and taking bits and pieces, you know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, when I had the chance to do the select team three years ago, you know, just being in the gym with these type of guys and seeing how they carry themselves and, you know, seeing how detail oriented everybody is when it comes to this beautiful sport. So, you know, any bits and pieces I can take that I can um, learn from and, and, and take back, you know, to, to my team, when we go back, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to take advantage of that. 
And if I, if I could follow up really quickly, please. In your off time with the time difference and you having so much free time, uh, what are you watching? Uh, like, what are you doing with your off time? What are you listening to? Or how are you spending your spare time over there? I play Call of Duty, man. So I, I got my system out here. Um, and I'm, I'm sneaking in some some good some good war zone time in Verdansk with, with my fellas. But the time difference kind of has us all over the place. But, you know, we, we found time to link up with each other. Thank you. All right, we got time for a couple more questions. We'll go with uh, Joe Vardun and then uh, we'll finish with Alex Seca from Newstitch. So, Devin, I mean, obviously this team needs you. Um, to the point where once you finally were able to take a nap, they put you right in the starting lineup. Um, during the finals, when you're, I know you're locked in there, but um, on your off nights, they were playing in Vegas and it wasn't going well. And I was wondering if you took any of your off nights during the finals to watch those games. And if you were watching saying like, oh, I, I can help, I can, you know, I can help get them going. Yeah, we, we watched all the expedition games as, as a team. Um, more just trying to get a gist of how they were playing and, you know, what type of offense are running and how they were guarding. And, you know, I, I got that, you know, I realized what they were doing and, you know, having the opportunity and these guys accepting to be able to come in here and, and be a big piece of it, you know, was an exciting and a great opportunity. Um, you know, so we're, we, we just got thrown together as a, a team just a few weeks ago or me a couple of days ago, them a few weeks ago. And, you know, we're playing against competition that's been playing against each other since they were, you know, 12 years old. So um, it's a new experience for us, but, you know, we're in the gym and we're on the pursuit to get better every day. And then um, Draymond and Pop, uh, they have both been where you are now in terms of being on the wrong end of the finals. Did they, did they pull you aside or talk to you or just kind of give you any kind of advice of, of just, you know, how to get through that? Um, we, we've talked about it, you know, in short conversation, um, talking about it with Draymond and, you know, him stressing the fact, you know, it, it's not it's not going to be that easy to to get back, you know, to to the finals. And, you know, I remember us as a team saying that in the locker room right after we lost that, uh, you know, we got to understand, you know, it's going to be even harder, you know, to make it to the point that we were at. So it was having an understanding for that. But, you know, I'm excited for, it. you know, the experience was great. You know, I'm glad I got to do it obviously ended up on the wrong side of the stick, but you know, that's life. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We'll finish up our final question tonight with from Alex. Hey, Devin, how you doing? What's up, man? Congratulations on the win. Uh, after the game, Dane said that the key was you guys play with urgency and as yourselves. What do you expect from the coaching staff and the rest of your teammates to help maintain this urgency they refer to, you know, going forward? I think we're figuring out, you know, I think the more important part was, you know, playing as ourselves, um, not too worried about stepping on each other's toes and understanding, you know, the more aggressive that we are, um, the more opportunities that we open up for each other, you know, so going in with the mindset of, you know, you, you don't want to step on anybody's toes. It kind of, you know, limits you to your capabilities. You know, we have a really talented team in, in every position. So, you know, we need everybody to be themselves and, you know, I know there's only one basketball out there, but when you have the right mindset to be aggressive, you know, I think you you cause gravity and open up easier looks for your, for your team. And just one more question, if I may. You know, being out of the country, any any cool fashion spots you, you've got to sit up lately at the game or cool spots you like to take advantage of? I wish, man. Um, we're pretty much in the hotel, but, you know, Tokyo is is one of the spots that I would like to come back to after – after COVID dies down, you know, from the fashion aspect, you know, I have a high level for their fashion and what they do here.